Hi, uh, my name is David Manock, and my previous little uh, video on the subject of hell in the New Testament, I introduced to, uh, for us how there are three Greek words translated uh, into our English word hell. And this second clip, I want to do a little summary, a general over, over uh, view of those three Greek words and a summary of them. So the summary goes like this. Hell is mentioned 24 times in, in the New Testament. And the three Greek words which I referenced in a previous uh, uh, video, Hades is mentioned 11 times, Gehenna mentioned 12 times, Tartarus is mentioned one time, Jesus mentions hell 15 times, four times he uses the word Hades, and 11 times Gehenna. By the way, if you're interested in getting a PowerPoint, I'm working towards getting all this posted uh, with a link uh, to our website so you can get the PowerPoints on all this. Uh, James mentions hell one time, Peter mentions hell one time, and Luke mentions hell two times, and the book of Revelation mentions hell four times. Uh, the three Greek words, Hades, corresponds to, as I said previously, Old Testament, Sheol. And again, it's a temporary place of the dead with two separate places. Place of comfort called Abraham's bosom, uh, which is rest and place of peace. Another place, a place of torment. Uh, and both inhabitants seem to be waiting for a judgment process where final destiny is determined. Gehenna is a final abode and condition of death, of death, Hades, and the wicked translated lake of fire. And Tatars, a temporary abode of wicked angels who were cast down into hell, and only Peter mentions that. So, some general thoughts as we uh, look at these three Greek words and their usage in the New Testament. Uh, New Testament treats hell as a real place not just a symbol or metaphor or some existential human dimension. Uh, there's location, time, space, and dimensions. Uh, hell has correspondence to the Old Testament Sheol, so there's a connection to the Old Testament, and both uh, fallen angels and human beings can be sent to hell. Uh, hell uh, can be experienced, though strangely, now through the tongue. And this one uh, is very uh, poignant and strange, and we might want to take it to heart. James 3, 6. And the tongue is a fire. The tongue is an unrighteous world among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the cycle of nature, and set on fire by hell. The implication, staggeringly, is we can actually create hell through our tongue. And, and since my uh, PhD is in the area of uh, uh, marriage and family therapy, which is systemic psychology, we see that quite often. Relationships destroyed, relationships haunted by uh, by uh, words spoken against a person. Sometimes the person, uh, some people never recover from that comment, that scathing uh, comment that the father said, you bum, you never amount to anything, you're worthless, just like your uncle. And that can haunt the human soul. Or, uh, or a young lady being told, oh, you're such an ugly duckling. It's going to be a challenge to get you married off. Who would want you? Uh, things should not be said, but they sadly are in life. And humans sadly can be agents of hell, primarily through the words. We can bless people the opposite. Another par uh, other uh, video clips, I will get more into the depth of Jesus' actual use of uh, the word hell, the various, uh, the two Greek words he, that are translated hell, and get into his heart about it. And I think you'll be 
pleasantly surprised at Jesus' attitude. Thank you.